This video is on how I do my baby headbands. I have five on the pattern I just completed, which is right here. You can get it for free off of Ravelry.com and off of StitchNiche.com. What I'm going to do is just touch on the highlights or the important parts of it because most of it you know how to do because they're primarily knit or yarn overs or knit two togethers. So I'm just going to touch base on the important parts, which is how I do the bow because the bow, I make it a little wider so it stands out more like a bow. This one that kind of shows it a little better because of what I'm doing now. It's called a wrap and turn. It's normally used on socks, but on this case, I'm only doing half of it because what it does, it allows you to widen the end of the band without having a hole. That's the reason I like to do it this way. So we're going to start with the basic one, which is the garter stitch one, which is right here. Let me enlarge this up a little bit. It's just, like I said, the basic garter stitch, which everybody knows. But what I'm going to show on it is how to do the wrap and turn. Now I've got a abbreviated version I'm doing here. I'm not doing the whole thing because the inside is just basically knit, which everybody knows. So I'm just going to show you how to do the wrap and turn part. Okay. So let's get started. I'll bring this down because you can see the same thing right here. The wrap and turn is the same right here. All right, so you would knit six. I'm doing this with worsted weight yarn so it's a little bit bigger and easier to see. Now I've got the volume turned all the way up on my iPad. If it's not loud enough, you can always try turning the volume up on your computer also. So here is the knit six. Now the wrap and turn, you bring the yarn to the front, slide the next stitch over, take the yarn to the back so it wraps around the stitch and bring the stitch back to the left needle and continue by bringing the yarn one more time to the front. That totally wraps the yarn around that stitch. Turn your work around. That's the turn part of the wrap and then you knit six back. So you're back to the beginning. And then you turn it again, which puts you back in the right orientation to knit the roll. So we knit all the way across because the other half of the wrap and turn is done on the other side. And you can't do a wrap and turn from this direction. You have to do the wrap and turn from this direction over here. So I'm going to do this rather quickly because we don't need to show you how to knit. We all know this part. And after I get this done, I'll knit a couple of rows really quickly to show you how the wrap and turn does not leave a hole in your work, which gives it a very nice finish. That part would be covered with the ring, but there's no need to have a hole when you don't need to. All right, so now we turn our work. Now the, ne the next roll is the same thing. It says right there, knit six, wrap and turn, knit six, turn, and you knit across. So we'll start with a knit six. And now we're going to do the wrap and turn again. So you bring the yarn to the front, slide the next stitch over, take the yarn to the back, pick the stitch up, put it back on the left needle, bring the yarn in between, turn your work, and knit back across. And this will complete the two rolls with the wrap and turn. So then you will continue with the pattern, whatever it says to do, whether you do knits, purls, knit two togethers, yarn overs. Let's turn our work. We'll knit at least one more roll back so you can see it a little bit better. I also have some completed ones I'll show you. But I just want to knit one more roll back. I'm going to try to keep this video around 20 minutes if possible. We're just about to the end. I've got about, it looks like eight more stitches. Like I said, this is just a little abbreviated version of how to do it. Because there's no need to go through all the, all the rest of it. Okay, so there we're done. You can kind of see it a little bit. You see how it's a little more flared out here and here. And if you look really close, I'll see if I can bring this up. There is no hole right there where we did the wrap and turn. And there's no hole right there. So if you look at one of the ones that are completed, like this is the completed garter stitch one. Let me bring the 
right back down. This is your completed garter stitch one. And as you can see, it's got the flare, but it's got no hole. So now we're going to go to the one that is the star stitch. Now, most everybody's seen my video on how to do the star stitch. So I'm really not going to do a whole lot with the star stitch one, but I will show you how I get it started. It's uh, roughly the same thing. Now with the star stitch, you don't do your first wrap and turn until you get to row six. So you actually get the two main rows of the star stitch done before you do a wrap and turn. I thought it'd be easier if I did it that way than kind of intermixing it. And the other wrap and turn is down here on rows 10 and 11, which we'll see on the next page. So we're just gonna do the first two rows of the pattern because the second two rows of the pattern are just straight knit. So I'm just only gonna knit four of these just so I have something started. All right, so you would do slip one as if to purl, knit one. So we're gonna do that, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one as if to purl, knit one, slip one as if to purl, knit one, slip one as if to purl, knit one, to, till you get to the end in this case, I'm just doing four instead of the usual six because this is just a sample. So now when you do part two of it is with the yarn in front, you slip one as if to purl. Then you put the yarn in back and knit one. So let me show you that. Let me start with a knit four. Because like I said, this is just the abbreviated version. All right, so you bring the yarn in front, slip one, put the yarn in back, knit one. Oh, it's backwards, I'm sorry. This one, the way you know which one to slip is the one you slip is the one that does not, that is not knitted from the previous row. So you know, if you're not lining up right, that's the best way to look to see if you're doing the star stitch correctly. So in this case, we're gonna to have to knit this one because we need to slip this one. So let's knit this one really quick. All right, so now we can slip the one that has not been knitted. So you bring the yarn in front, slip one, yarn in back, knit one. Same with here. See this one we're not, has not been knitted. That was the slip stitch. So we're gonna bring the yarn in front, slip one, yarn in back, knit one. Bring the yarn in front, slip one, yarn in back, knit one. This way, if you're doing a very long roll of star stitch, you'll know that you're on track just by looking for the one that has not been knitted. And you know that's the one that you're slipping. It's a great way to make sure you don't do one wrong. Okay, now that's this would be ending of the first, the two pattern rolls. It doesn't show too good on the front yet. You have to actually knit the next roll, which is a knit across. Um, I'll just do one really quick because we want to get on to the next one that we still have three more. Now the next two are exactly alike with just one roll difference. So I'm only going to do one, but I'll explain the second roll, which is just another roll of knit. So one would have the yarn over knit two together with one roll of knit. The other one has one roll of yarn over knit two together with two rolls of knit. So you can see the star cup starting to pop up right there. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. So the next two are an eyelet band and a second version of the same eyelet band. So let's look at the two eyelet bands. See one of them has four rolls of eyelets. And you notice they go sideways. It just does that when you knit it, which is kind of nice. Now the other one, version two, as you can see, it's only two rolls of eyelets, but there's that knit roll in between. And you can see the flare because you're also doing the wrap and turn here. This one doesn't show as well, but the wrap and turn is here. I think it's because of the eyelets, it doesn't show as well. But let me show you how to get that one started. I'll bring this down. You'll be able to see the difference. Like with the first one, it's yarn over knit two together, repeat to the end, and a roll of knit. Then yarn over knit two together, a roll of knit. Yarn over knit two together, roll of knit. Now when you go to version two, it's yarn over knit two together with two rolls of knit. Yarn over knit two together, two rolls of knit. So they're both roughly the same, just with the slight difference. So I'm going to show you one of them. 
and same thing I'm not going to do the wrap and twist or wrap and turn because we've already showed that you can always go back to the beginning of the video to see it I'm just going to do four real quick this one's kind of dark thread okay so you would do a yarn over which means you wrap the yarn around your needle and you knit two together and knit all right the next one wrap the yarn around the needle which is a yarn over and knit two together we we'll do it again put the yarn over the needle knit two together yarn over knit two together and you do it all the way across until you get to the last six stitches or in my case I'm just doing four so we knit four and so the next roll says you knit across here they're showing the wrap and turn but we're not going to do the wrap and turn like I said you've already seen that so here you just knit across And when you get to the yarn over, it looks like a big gaping hole. That is correct. You definitely want to make sure that gaping hole is there. So you would knit that. Then you knit your next stitch. Knit your next yarn over. Knit your next stitch. Knit the yarn over. And you just repeat this all the way across. So there's nothing unusual about this particular one. So see, I'm already to the end. Now, if you were doing the first version, you would immediately do your next yarn over knit two together roll. If you're doing the second version, you do one more roll of knit before you do your yarn over knit two together roll. So that's how that part works. Now, the, the last one is kind of a cute one. I call it a mock rib stitch because what you're doing is you're doing a rib, but yet you're not doing a regular rib because as you notice, it stays separated it's a great way to do a button band because you don't have to stretch it out in order for it to stay put for your buttons so mock rib stays stretched out but it gives you the illusion of a, a rib now this one is a knit one purl two the old adage that everybody says knit one purl two well we're not doing an, a knit one purl two for the band we're just doing it at, inside here for our headband all right so let's get started it's really interesting the way it works okay so we'll start here at the top we're gonna knit, I'll just do four and then you knit one purl two and repeat across to the last in my case four but you would be doing six so let me knit four now it may not come out exact because this is three stitches instead of an even amount so I might come up one short so you knit one Bring your yarn in front, purl two, yarn in back, knit one, yarn in front, purl two, yarn in back, knit one, yarn in front, knit two, yarn in back, knit one. Now you see I'm down to my four, so I'm just going to do the four. So now when I get to the back side, this is the part that keeps it stretched out, is the knit. Because you're not doing a knit one purl two, which keeps it scrunched in, we're doing all knit. So that's what helps keep this spread apart. It's really neat the way it works. So we're going to knit this one all the way across. I'll do it rather quickly because we don't need to show this. We're just about done. And I'll do one more roll, the knit one purl two. It may not show too well because it takes several rolls before it really starts to show, but it, it def definitely will work. Okay, so now we're on roll six, same thing. Here we're six and eight, but we're gonna do four and then we're gonna do the same again, knit one purl two, because we're only doing 
the knit purl on the same side, which is the front. We're not doing the knit purl on the back. The, knit, the back is just all solid knit. So it helps keep your front and back separated. All right, so now we're going to, let's see, we're supposed to knit one. We're going to purl two. I'm going to knit one. Now see this roll looks like all, all purling on it because the knit the back of the knit roll looks like a purl. So it's really hard to see it on this first half. That's why it takes several rolls before you can really see it. But it is there. And you knit one. I'm down to my last four, so we're going to knit the four. I'll go ahead and knit back. See if we can actually see the design starting to come in. We need to get on to the next step. We're already at 16 minute mark and I'm trying to keep this around 20 minutes. And you can always pause it or roll back and watch it again. That's the good thing about YouTube. It gives you the different options. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to it, share with your friends, and check the like button. All right, let's see if we can actually see it starting to form a little bit. Now, unfortunately, you can't even see it a little, but not, not like you should be able to. But like I said, once you do several rolls, it will show through. All right, now let's get on to the finishing. There's two ways of finishing it. You can either finish it with the wrap or finish it with a ring. Now, there's two sizes of rings. There are the 0.75 size and there's the 6.625. I use the 0.625 on all of mine unless I get into the ones that are really wide like this. Then I use the 7, uh, 7 point, 0.75 one, which is the same as 3 quarter inch. And you can buy them in packages of, like there's 15 to a package. This one I've been taken out of, so that's why there's not too many. Or you can use all kinds of buttons. The ones with the shanks work the best, but you can use the ones that have the holes too. That They work just as well. You can use little critters like butterflies, uh, bumblebees, ladybugs. Here's a sunflower. This is just a metal one that's gold. So it's entirely up to you which one you want to use. So let's get started. Let me get a little bit of yarn here. Thread my needle. All right, let's grab one. We'll use this one. You fold it in half, wrong sides together. Grab your ring. Let me move this down a little bit. There, might, might make it a little easier. Scrunch this all up. Of course, you weave in your tails. You already know how to do that, so I'm not going to show weaving in your tails. Now, it's a little bit tight. Just keep squishing it. It will all fit in. Do both at the same time because it's kind of hard to put one through and then try to put the other one through. There. Okay. Now you open them flat. And you have to kind of play with them a little bit because you want them to be flat here. You don't want them to be curled under. Just play with it. It'll work. There. And you can see how it kind of flares out a bit because of that wrap and twist we did. Then you pick... If you say you're going to do a button, let's see, that doesn't show, nope, I think I'll do the ladybug. All right, you start from the inside, from the center, leave yourself a tail. I can't even hold on to the ladybug. Go through the shank. I'm sorry, I'm trying too hard. And then you go right next to the original where you came out and there's your ladybug in place now I always do a second time I want to make sure she doesn't come off so you go through the shank a second time then when you turn your work over you do a square knot you pull it tight and do a square knot so let me turn it like this I'll bring it up a bit. A square knot is you put the right tail over the left and pull it tight. Then you put the left tail over the right 
and pull it tight. And there you've got your ladybug. And then of course you'd put your other ladybug on the other side. Now if you were doing the wrap and twist method, because you don't have the rings, you grab yourself some yarn. In this case, I like to double my yarn because when you wrap it, it goes quicker if you can wrap two strands at the same time. Now I'm not using the same color. I'm trying to use a contrasting color to make it easier for you to see. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Same thing, you put the wrong sides together. And you start right where your knit six ends or you knit eight. I do that to make sure I t secure it. Then you weave it in and out, back and forth. Make sure you catch both pieces. And you pull it tight. You see how you pull it tight? That kind of crunches it up for you. Now you can tie it off if you want. I usually don't. I just leave it that way. And then when I start wrapping it, so then you wrap around the front, bring it through, wrap it again. You can still have to fiddle with it a bit because you want to make sure it lays nice. Wrap it as many times as you want till you get the look you want. And this looks pretty good, so I think I'll stop right there. So here you can tie it off. Well, and you can secure it if you like. What I like to do is I just go over to the side, pick my button. I'll pick the little sunflower. Oh, what sunflower? Well, there it goes. This is optional. You can do it your own way. Time each individually if you like, or you can cheat like I'm doing and just time both at the same, all the stuff at the same time. So after you get it through, Then I just take my yarn underneath all this to the other side, come up here, and oh, I don't have the other, uh, other flower, but I'll just stick this one on. And you put your other one on, and you secure it on the back, and then you have your other one done. So that's how you would do your wrap and, that's, and your ring. Thank you for watching.